Yes, man. Here we are. Yes, man. We're back. Miracle Mets. Magic Mets. It's been a magical week. Oh, my God. This is partly why our podcast is late. Sorry we're late. Sorry we're late. <laughs> <laughs> it's been more than my heart can really handle. It's it's crazy. I It's fun to see such like an eight-year-old boy version of you. Yeah. yeah. You know, you just... It's. It really feels like it's bringing you back to it. I. I mean, I didn't know you when you were a child, but you have a very childlike wonder to you, mm. childlike significance to something that's like totally out of side your control. Yeah. But I would say, is it so outside our control? <laughs> that's what I would love to know. I would love to know if all of this stuff we've been doing, this whole baseball season, has helped the Mets. Right. Like, don't you wish? That there was just some sort of like scientific, tangible answer to that. Like, hey, cut this shit. Did we help these boys? No, well, okay. <laughs> so if you haven't been paying attention, there's some very exciting developments happening. Yeah, yeah. Here's the the Church of Chill sports update from and, Cass. Yes. <laughs> See how this goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, first off, there is one sport in this life that's very chill, and that's baseball. Yeah. So we um, worship at the altar of the baseball gods. Oh, First my God. and foremost, you must understand this. Yeah, yeah. It's a very meditative sport. You must have uh, patience, trust, faith. An attention span. Attention span. Mm-hmm. All of those things. There's 162 games every season. It'll consume your life. It, but, but, I mean, it literally is half the year. <laughs> you know what you're doing at 7 p.m. every day of the week. Yeah. And uh, that's cool. Um, which I love. Mm. So in the last week we've had, we're Mets fans. I was on uh, the Little League Mets team as a kid. Oh my God, I forgot. Yeah. Sean's been a Mets fan forever. Yeah, my whole life. And it's hard to be a Mets fan. Not, mm. I wouldn't say it's hard to be a Mets fan. Being a Mets fan is uh, full of a lot of heartbreak. Yeah, well, it, yeah, I mean, a history of heartbreak. A history of heartbreak, and almost a history of like not even heartbreak because you never had your heart, you never opened your heart to anything to believe in to start with. Yeah, but right. Like the Yankee, a Yankee fan right now is probably a little bit more heartbroken than a Mets fan has been because they have like a an expectation. They went on a good run. For all we know, they could win the World Series. So yeah, they don't yeah. have any reason yet to be heartbroken. Absolutely, absolutely. But, but it's they, a long dry spell. They are scared of playing the Mets. Mm-hmm. So this is all very important that we tell you this. Um, <laughs> it's context for a bigger thing. We will make a larger point about this. Mm-hmm. But basically, the Mets have, uh, I don't know, this is where I lose and don't even know how to say the NLDS or whatever, everything else. You don't means. even need to get into all that. They're okay. going for it. I told the regular season ends on September 30th. I said from the beginning of the year, we're going to be watching Mets baseball in October. We just got to do our thing. We got to conjure and cultivate magic ourselves. And while we were doing that, they were doing it. And they were cultivating all these magical like um, talismans for different moments of turning things around. And the true turnaround for the team happened on the day that um, Grimace from McDonald's came and threw out the first pitch, which is just a very strange thing to begin with. Like, why was Grimace throwing out the first pitch? But pretty much ever since that day, which was, I think, June 2nd or something like that, the Mets were the best team in baseball. They went from, like, one of the worst, an embarrassing laughing stock, which we still would have watched every game because it does develop character. We still watch a terrible season. I do get a little more ADD, though. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. It (laughs) it makes your ADD worse when they're having a losing season. I'm like, I can't watch this. When they're having a winning season where like, it feels like we're reading books. It feels like, you know, (laughs) it feels like we're doing something for our attention span. But um, yeah, ever since Grimace threw out the first pitch, they've been the best team in baseball. And along the way, you know, they signed this guy. They had this guy in the minors. uh, He's 34 years old, Jose Iglesias. And... uh, he barely didn't make the, the the team out of spring training, and he was down in the minors, and uh, they called him up, and he is also a Latin pop star, so he has this song, OMG, and he comes up to the majors and starts slashing and bringing magic. He brings the mojo. He brings mojo to the team, 
and um, he he just brought a sense of wonder and magic to the team. And it was really, it, you, after the Grimace first pitch, with the addition of Iglesias coming in, with that OMG magic, well, and a number the one song. Yeah, they, they play, play the, the song, song when they win. So there's like, there's something to win for, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, so you had the addition of him. And then... You know, they, they were going on this epic run, and then they had a little bit of a downturn, and then we had the Haktua girl come in and throw out the first pitch. God you know? bless her. God bless her. She turned things around again for the Mets, so she's one of our sacred talismans for the season. And um, just so many things along the way. And at a trade deadline, they picked up uh, this young boy, uh, Jesse Winker, who I love, and he's he's what the he's what the team needed in terms of dark arts because this is a very wholesome group of guys they're they're friends that you know they like they're they're putting out little statements being like all of our success is built on friendship it's it's and it's too is, wholesome they need a motherfucker that people are scared well, of. well i'll say we watched last season and it was just rough <sighs> they didn't no one cared i was like this is the this this team's putting in no effort publicly Ex players were shaming them for being a low effort team. Yeah, and you oh, could see yeah. it. You were like, they don't care. They're not friends. They don't like this. No. So I think Inglacius was the secret sauce as part of bringing in Mojo, giving them something to dance about, bringing mm. a little of that OMG swagger. Baby. And then um, we got JD Martinez, which is like a veteran player coming in as a a, a DH designated hitter. And he, I think, my theory is he taught the boys a little something something. He taught them taught them something about being professional hitters. Yeah, which and is important. And along the way, he lost sight of that he was a professional hitter. Well, so he's, he's an not old been man. A, he's not been much of a factor down the stretch. He's an old man. But it's but still, which it's, an old man is younger than me. When I will you're say. when you <laughs> the, the old the veterans of of the game are your age. No, no he's it's, younger it's than me. It's true. He's it's, younger than yeah, me. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, but it, it's it's more than what they're doing on the field because like when you're playing that for that. You have to start relying on magic when it's a six month thing and you're trying to turn it into a seven month thing with playoffs. You got to rely on magic, you got to turn to magic, and that's what previous teams didn't do. They just threw money at their problems. That's what the Mets have been doing, they've just been throwing money at their problems, and that's not the way it is. That's not what works. It doesn't help, it doesn't do anything. So, this was a season where they said, You know what? We're not even going for it in 2024, we're more of a 2026 team. Stand by. And uh, I think that that allowed to lower the expectations a little bit. Let the boys have a little fun. Let, 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 yeah, let's have fun out there. <laughs> no one expects anything from us because we're saying don't expect anything from us. So, you know, it was it was like it's, it's all these things in conjunction. You have Francisco Lindor having a, an MVP season. And if it wasn't for Shohei Otani, uh being absolutely insane, the best baseball player that the world has ever known, uh, he'd be winning the uh, Francisco Lindor would win, be winning the MVP. So many crazy stories, and it's culminating today in uh, the Mets playing the Phillies in Game One of the first round of the NLDS. So if you're listening to this down the line, um, isn't it rad that the Mets won the World Series? <laughs> this is so rad. <laughs> You have no idea what it brings out in me. It's crazy. I and I and it's weird because we've watched a few seasons together and I've kept this thing dormant. And it's a thing I think it's a thing a lot of Mets fans keep dormant, but it is that childlike wonder that like oh, fucking we're going to do it. Well, I you we know have magic. I've been, you know, I, I wear this baseball hat everywhere I go. So everywhere I go, uh Mets fans or Yankees fans are talking me up. And it's it's interesting to hear, you know, Yankees fans and other people like don't want to play the Mets. They know the Mets are hot right now. Mm -hmm. They got that little magic stuff where, you know, they'll be trailing in the ninth, come back and win the game. And this happens like many a times. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, the Phillies are scared of us. Everybody's scared of us and they should be. And I, I just I just pray the boys have a fun time. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And, the, and that everything's on their side. <laughs> well, this, this is this is where it gets interesting because is it reflective of or a result of having fun? The mojo reclamation that we've been doing. This is where I think I had a part. I was watching the game. Look, I'm a, 
I'm a little newer to being like a regular baseball watcher with mm-hmm. you. Yeah. And I, I guess I knew that the inside hat, I, I just saw Manaya, one of their pitchers wearing his cap inside out. And, yeah. You know, I was like confirming with you. That's like to rally. Right. Yeah. And I was like, I should put my hat on. Inside this was out. crazy. So I put my hat on inside out. We're watching the game. The Mets are losing two nothing. One out. Top of the ninth. Yeah. Next. One runner on. No, that's no. when the runner came on. Yeah. Lindor got on base. You turned your hat inside out. Lindor got on base, then Nimmo. And then Pete Alonso hit the biggest home run in Mets history. Exactly. So, you know, it's like as fans, we have to do our part. And if mm-hmm. you're a Philly fan or any other baseball fan, you don't listen to this part. Yeah. All it Mets work. Fan. <laughs> we're 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 at X nine you. No, honestly, it's it's what's fun about baseball and even like we just did a series against the Brewers in Cincinnati. No, Milwaukee. Milwaukee. The Brewers in Milwaukee. Who are the Cincinnati people? Reds. The Reds in Cincinnati. Okay. We just did the Brewers in Milwaukee, right? And we won two out of three games. And it would have been nice to win two games, but I like winning two out of three games because I want the home team to get a win. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I really do feel that way. Like, yeah. I don't want to embarrass a team. Yeah. You like a season where the Mets just win two out of three games. I mean, my heart doesn't like it. That's a great season. But that's a great season. That's a really great season if they did win that. But you <laughs> you like when uh, you don't want to see it's weird cuz this this time of year it ha- uh, this uh, the beast gets awakened if your team's in it, you know. Like it's like, "Oh, I don't want them I I don't want to send home the Brewers fans home crying." I'm like, "I love that. I I I love the shockwave that got sent through that stadium." I just feel bad cuz you know it Holy lands on like one shit. it like lands on one. It's like a no, what it did is it traumatized some eight-year-old kid like it did to me when this used to happen to the Mets. <laughs> and you say, you say to yourself, am I going to keep going with this or am I going to give up? Do I give up on things in life or do I keep my perfect faith? Do I keep my perfect faith for 43 years, which of 38 of them, I've been seriously obsessed with this fucking team. And getting seriously disappointed. And getting like, uh, and and I can I can tell you the 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 dates. I I, I will say I could tell you the dates. I could say September twenty ninth, two thousand seven. Just look into it. Mets September twenty ninth. Is that the one where you woke up, where you were like got up after? Uh... I was like, oh, the Mets are going to clinch the division today. And I I woke up and threw the game on, and I was five minutes late to the game, and it was already seven nothing. <laughs> and I was like, oh okay. They blew it. but but basically, the reason I don't feel bad for those for those fans is because I've been through it. It's part of being a fan and it's part of, uh, you know, if you're going to invest time in this space of sports and magic, it's part of, um, you know, that cosmic love that's very indifferent to our feelings, but it's trying to teach us lessons. And I think you can kind of, you can use it to smooth things out. And that's what I've done this season. And we're we're making this film Wild Magic. Literally, we started getting back out there as the season started, and we're wrapping up the film as the season's ending. It just it makes me want to play my part because, like, maybe you not showing up to time on time to that game, like you and maybe many other fans. I was hungover. Yeah, well, you didn't do your part. But I think what this team is showing us is they're keeping their perfect faith. They are having a mag- such a magical season that in the ninth inning, they're down 2-0. They're and you going know to each- they're going to win still. And everyone knows they're going to win, and they're going to each other a lot. And Iglesias is saying to Alonso, you're going to hit a homer. You're going to hit a three-run homer next this inning. And you he know? did. And he does. Yeah. And you're just like, of course. But you have to you have to show up and support your team. I had to put my rally hat on. Mm. And I'll be honest – First eight innings, seven innings of the game, I was like scrolling my phone, doing whatever. <laughs> and then you were like, hey, this is. <laughs> I said, it, uh, I hate to say it, it might be the last three outs of the season right now. And I was like, all right, I'll You pay flipped attention. your hat around and you were like, it ain't going to be the last three outs of nothing. The Mets are about to win this game. And I was like, yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> Our teams need us. Holy shit. I can't even tell you how many times I watched the replay of that all day yesterday, today. You know, I woke yeah. up thinking about it. It made me giddy. And I'm like, I didn't know that um, sports had had the ability to unlock this in me at this age. Because I've been 
you have to protect your tender heart as a Mets fan. <laughs> you know, it's being a Mets fan has prevented me from going all in on really any other team. Like I love the Rangers and I love the Knicks. I saw the Rangers win the Stanley Cup. The Mets won the World Series in 1986. I can't remember it. Yeah. You know, I want to taste the glory. <laughs> even if it's we once. were even looking into like how do we get to a game and then we're like actually it's probably better to watch at home oh yeah it's too emotional i mean we were screaming the whole house was waking up <sighs> we were like running into your parents room like hello <laughs> oh my god oh my god that was crazy everyone's been so happy and and look i'm sure it's chomsky and whoever says that you know sports are the opiate of the masses and i i have to look at that and i reflect on that but i will say Right now, mainstream politics is pulling the wool over your eyes. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to pay attention to something, you're not missing out by not paying attention to MSNBC or CNN. Mm. I mean, we I get my news elsewhere, who and who knows if it's the right news or whatever. But I will say we've brought the level of tension and anxiety and fear, anger, anger resentment down in our household. And, and it was peeking out. And now we wake up and we're like, did we? Did you see what happened last night? Mm -hmm. It wasn't like, are you going to be defending? If did you hear what he said? Did you <laughs> hear what Trump said? It's are like you... not that anymore. It's, it, you know. If Russia was on our street, would you defend your family? I don't know what we're going to do in the off season, but we'll figure, we'll we'll figure, figure something out. out. But this has definitely smoothed things out because we've allowed it to. Well, it's created a bonding. Why would anyone want to feel bad about that? You're like, look, I'm sure there's more important. No, it, don't feel bad. It's a revolutionary act to fucking smooth out your days and figure out what works for you and figure out what works for your nervous system. Do you know when my ideas happen? It's while I'm sitting there watching a baseball game. You know, it's when nothing's expected of me. Well, That's when it's just like, oh, whoa, I am fishing in the most stocked pond right now. I, and I'm pulling them in and, you know, sometimes they're useful, sometimes they're not. But that's when they're happening. Well, I'm literally bonding everywhere I go, even with the Yankees fans, because we're just having a real conversation about something we know. And now I'm like tighter with the postman and yeah. um, tighter with the guy at the farm stand. And I'm tighter with the guy that I run in at the post office. And then I'm tighter with, you know, whoever it is. And even mm. when we don't root for the same team, there's a camaraderie. Yeah. That brings us together. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like being a deadhead. It's yeah. like you're, you're it's like you're in on something and the people that would bother talking to you about it probably know what they're talking about to oh, a certain yeah. degree. <laughs> I know? do I did talk smack to the uh, guy the guy he was like go Yankees at the uh our new cannabis dispensary. You're like they suck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like didn't we sweep you guys? I'm talking smack to my friend Liz's nephew. I'm like but it's all in good fun. Oh, it's well, it's it's the best. It's the best, and it's wholesome, and it's good, and it's American, and it's an as it's as American as Grateful Dead, and as to me as groovy as that. You know, it's kind of like the Dead. There's like there's there's great shows that you'll never forget, and then there's just like you know, oh, okay, those ones. But they're still awesome. I was about to say, what but are you? What, still <laughs> no, tell me a mediocre what, Dead show. No, but do you know what I mean? Like. Yeah, pull something out of uh, the dog days of summer of 1994, you know. Those are the true dog days. Baseball's on strike. The dead are going around not sounding that great. But it's better than nothing. It's better than nothing. Be grateful for what you got. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But, um, you know, like we've, it, we, I've been, I, I feel like we've been in a long-term process of mojo reclamation but also like a very like to me i'm in like the i feel that the summer's over i feel things changing i feel it's starting to get darker and it's getting a little colder yeah and um we had some hiccups with the film that kind of threw me off and i got down in the dumps so bad that i was like this has been the worst couple days of my whole year it's probably been a good year if I can even recognize that. Yeah. If I'm like, I, I really, really feel um, like shit. I feel so self-conscious, you know? I felt I f feel like I was like uh, turning on myself in a way that was like 
so obvious that I'm like, why didn't I turn on myself earlier? How have I ever done anything? What the fuck am I doing? You know, Mm -hmm. like deeply turning on yourself, Mm -hmm. mind playing tricks on you, second guessing things, which for me is crazy, especially in our world of like creating cinema and stuff like second guessing things and second guessing decisions I made. And why did we get involved with that person or do this or why did we make this or just fucking questioning things on the deepest levels and it was fucking my ass up and you could see it and i was telling you i was like yo if i was 50 out of 100 yesterday i'm half that today and i was just like waking up in worse shape i was like having lingering migraine auras like my shoulders hurting it's like physically manifesting it's just like not good not good and i'm sure that there's probably some astrological explanation you know there's probably someone out there yeah we're like, eclipse I season you, yeah uh, yeah new exactly moon, whatever yeah because it was like october i don't know was it maybe like second and third around that it was it october 2nd was a new moon oh well yeah an eclipse oh okay does that ma- does that make sense with what i'm saying look we need another girlfriend who does astrology i don't know no i'm just, I'm just we're joking <laughs> it's a joke <laughs> Uh, no um but i was so fucked up guys i was like really fucked up and maybe i still am yeah 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 but it you got think so you're, you're it's a tight it's a tight wire and yeah, you, of course you, you slip off and i look i i think you being, forget you're on a wire and then you look down and you're like holy shit <laughs> being a sensitive person is a fucking tight rope act to it begin is with. and then trying to be like i'm a sensitive person who's gonna really put myself out there in the form of art and it's going to be very personal. It's going to yeah. be very personal to me. And and then you, know. you have a girlfriend who's like, why are you so fragile? <laughs> oh, my baby girl. You, can't, you break my heart sometimes. I'm like, trust me, this is how you want me. I'm, it's not fragile. It's open. I'm like, you're so it's, goddamn fragile. It's open. It's open. I'm, I'm sensitive to what people are putting out there. I'm sensitive. No, person. no, and I'm sorry I called you fragile, you know. Yeah. I'm just saying maybe I'm, I'm a little more bullheaded. But that's how, but that's how you know it's getting so bad. You know, it, yeah, if yeah, I'm yeah. feeling so bad about myself that it's like emanating out to where you're like, yeah, you're a bitch. <laughs> I'm like, whoa. All right. Let's get into um, Mojo <laughs> Reclamation <laughs> Services now. Like immediately, what do I have to do? What do I have to start doing? Because like, look, I'm really good at like really good at knowing how to help someone else in their time of need for that. But for myself, I'm like, uh, uh, yeah. Well, and I'm not good at it with you because you start, you can't help it. You take it out on me a little bit. Yeah. And yeah. so that's where I'm like, I should be like nursing you like a mom nurses a little baby bird, but instead you're like pecking at me. And so I like, I'm like, well, I push think... you out of the nest. I'm like, get out of here. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> that's I'm, true. I'm not chewing your food first. But you, you, you have <laughs> in the past. You have in the past. I mean, I, I think that. Uh, you know, the, the bottom line is like, you you can't relate, especially in that moment, maybe not ever, but especially in that moment, like you can't relate with how serious it's gotten and how bad it's gotten and how, uh, my mind playing tricks on me has like raised the stakes so much, you know? So you're trying to go business as usual. And I'm like, I'm fucking losing my mind right now i don't know what to say like it's interesting uh, i'm going crazy I, it, like if i could cry i would this would have been a day of crying you know i like the thing is though when your mental health is weak and you lose your confidence like i wish i could pick up the slack and sometimes i do and sometimes i can but when you're like get me off this planet i'm like yeah me too get me out of here i'm fucking going with you like you know what i mean <sighs> That's where I get to. Like you, you know, you get to this place where you you're so my sun and guiding light. Mm. But that when you lose the narrative, I'm like, I don't. I, you want me to have the narrative? You're the one who's supposed to have the narrative. I'm like, yeah, we're done for. Cut it off. I'm like, yeah. Hunter Thompson, this shit. Like, let's get out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't need to be like that, though. No, I know. And so, that, but when know. it gets like that, you know, it's like, okay. Whew. What tools do we have at our? This is this is what. Thank the, God the Mets did good. <laughs> holy shit! I literally gave us something to live for. Uh, it, people won't believe this. They wouldn't even believe this <laughs> if you know. It was like I was feeling so shitty, and it, it, the weather was shitty outside, 
and I'm watching the Mets and they're losing and they're going to get eliminated. And I was just like, please, can we just, I'm, you know, I was like, I'm turning around. Fuck it. I'm not even asking anyone. I Sure. Metatron, if you want to fucking help out any of my homies out there, <laughs> all of them, if y'all want to help out. But I also, I got my own back. We're turning this around. Fuck it. I'm not, I'm not being sad anymore. I'm not being sad anymore. And they fuck. They, and then the game turned around. And then the next day, the weather started being nice. Look, I'm not saying I control all that shit. By a long <laughs> shot. We know who controls that shit. <laughs> but um, it was like it was literally like that. It just it just got so bad. It just got so bad. Well, and the other thing about it is you're like people are like really going through it. There are towns decimated, places we love, people we love, and you're like I'm in this tiny myopic. You can't eat. You're like, how can I not even find my own gratitude amidst the chaos? No, it's it's literally the part of me that should literally be in service and not thinking about myself, calling out, and I'm like crushed under it, and I'm like, I don't know what to do. I just did. I just. I, I just didn't know what to do. I, I just really was not having good mental health. It probably had a lot to do with being exposed to all that and like seeing what the fuck everyone's going through right now, and a lot of our friends, you know, and. uh Ooh, it's all too much, you know? We shot good parts of this movie in Asheville. We went back to Asheville for two weeks for this movie. That's how much we were drawn to the magic there. And I'm just sitting there crushed. And uh, I don't know. All I could get across to you was that, like... And and, and this is where our privilege comes in, because I don't think people can do this, but it's a big part of the Mojo Reclamation. It's like, <laughs> I need to... All the stuff that are driving everything right now needs to go on pause. You know? You know how how Dean Ween was like in the middle of the tour was like, Nope, can't not one more show. It stops now. I don't know what he was going through, but I can kind of I can feel into it. I can feel into the level where the anxiety, where it all just gets too much where you're like, I can't function, this ain't good. Never felt this way before. It all needs to stop. It needs to slow down right now. And I get why they stopped in the middle of that tour. I don't fault fault these guys. I don't anybody that ever needs to cancel anything, including fucking plans. Do what you gotta do for your mental health. Especially so that's, plans. So that's kind of what I was saying. I was like, can we stop pushing so hard on the film and talking about it all the time and thinking about it? like I've been obsessed with this project for too long. I need to go outside. I need to have bullshit conversations with our friends. Uh, like I, I started realizing, I'm like, what would bring me back? What would bring me out of the depths? One thing is is going outside. That's why we're out here right now. Being with the trees. Being with the trees. I know that, and I learned it actually from people in our movie. So I was like, I need. I just need to go be around the trees because it's harder. It's hard to hold on to this stuff when I'm when I'm out there. Yeah. I need to sweat. Yeah. I need to uh, not only just sweat. I also need to run. So I got up and I ran. That helps. Immediately, you're starting the day in a better place. I was on my period. We had to have sex. I think I'm sorry. That was partly not helping either. Well, but it it, it also <laughs> makes sense because, like, when you're on your period, I'm on my period. I'm yeah. the more emotional of us two. You yeah. don't really even get, like, PMS. I get it. I get it because the, cause the energy has changed. I get PMS. We're not in our horny time anymore, and I get PMS because of it. It's, it's, part, of, it's, it's part of the building blocks of what takes a man down. Like, <laughs> that's what took me down to begin with. Semen retention. <laughs> so I just needed to get out in the forest. I needed to run. I needed to sweat, um, be in the cold water. We get in this pool. We're going to be in this pool today. Uh, well, I think sometimes at least I can get this, and this is where we were fighting, is like, there you, especially around the creation of art, all of a sudden there can be like a false sense of urgency. Like, this has to happen now. We need to figure this out now. This We need to give this attention now. And sometimes you got to circle the wagons. you got to get perspective. Art is perspective. This is where our wisdom comes in are accumulated like we have data points for this yes how to slow it down and that it's okay too and that actually it's, when it's we, better and more service to something to to take a take a take a breath to we s- have our own projects to look back on and be like wait so what were we doing at this stage in the oxiana edit we were taking a break from it for a second yeah you know like so so the the wisdom comes in there which is good yeah because a lot of times you're not seeing clearly that's when you're having mental health issues. And your your negative thoughts are becoming very loud. And when your negative thoughts are very loud, that's like a small part of reality. Mm. 
But when all you hear is the negative thoughts, it's because you're you're in it and you don't have perspective. You can't zoom out. You, I mean, because obviously when you zoom out and if you've done enough mushrooms or whatever it is, you get the sacred download that it's okay. Everything is okay. You die, it's okay. You live, it's okay. You get injured, it's okay. Like it's, you lose people you love, it's okay. On a, on a deep spiritual level, there is a, it's okay, because it just is. Mm. But, you know, in the heat of the moment. It's hard to tether to that. And yeah, there's a little bit of an existential dread that can come with like the it's okayness amidst the chaos. Um, Because you, you want to hold on to something good and you want everything to be working really well and everything to be on the up and up. Mm. But you know, you, we always talk about, it's not about changing the landscape, it's changing the lens. And so sometimes your lens gets cl- muggy and clouded, or it's like the lens is like hyper-focused on like a, a flaw or a judgment. And you just got to like, whew, and remember that there's love and you gotta beauty. You got to like rack focus, you gotta like, like ugh, yeah. huge ass rack focus. Huge ass rack focus. And sometimes you got to step away in order to do that, I think. And an iris pull. Sometimes you do an iris pull and all of a sudden you're like, oh, there's so much more light. I'm surrounded by light. I thought this shit was Oh yeah. And well, you're like, you're getting depressed about, you're trying to make like the most, you're trying to make the most beautiful, positive film. Like, of course you're going to go into the depths of hell and doubt is like a balance to that no i know i just talked to our editor and i told her everything i've been going through and she's like oh no and i was like i know what i I knew i knew this was coming and it's okay (laughs) it's fine it's like totally normal but when you put it when you play with magic that you're going to get tested a little bit but it's also perspective like Mm -hmm. this is what i'm worked up about yeah. This is what I'm scared about. I'm trying to put a gift into the world and I'm just worried that it's not the best gift I could possibly make. Like, what are we talking about? Yeah, yeah. You know? Well, yeah. That's most people's problems, so it's easy for you to say. You know? that that. But that is most people's problems. That's why it's so much easier to, like, give advice and to apply it to yourself. Right. The most people's problem, like... Could be boiled. It could probably... Most of it be solved by that, like... Oh, uh, no, don't worry. No one thinks that about you. <laughs> that type of <laughs> no energy. No one's thinking about you. Yeah, like, oh, no one cares. Like, it's, it's, uh, oh, don't worry about that. You know, that type of shit. But it doesn't, it doesn't do anything for, it feels a, really for the real anxious heart. Yeah. And our little noggins mm-hmm. that just want to do good and get validated and yeah. get a pat on the back. It's real to me. And that's also, I think, when life is going into such chaos and it feels like, uh, the environment is, uh, global warming is uh irreversible and we're naively just like going about our business it's hard for uh not to that's there's just a there's like an urgency that can kind of get like misplaced i think Mm -hmm. totally totally exactly you're like i can't control how everyone consumes or over consumes or eats or does everything. So, but I can look at myself and try to like judge what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I don't well, know. yeah, I mean, you, it's something like Asheville happens and you're like, it, it, and you're, you're kind of frozen. It's like, what can I do? I can't even access this place. It wouldn't be appropriate if I did because uh, I would need help. I, I'm so, I'm, uh, I so I'm don't useless. know what to do. I'm <laughs> useless other than to send money, which we can and we will. And I think we have done. You just send money, but like, I don't know, we're problem solvers. So it puts you into that headspace. Like, why the fuck is this happening? This is, this isn't right. This isn't right. And when there's nothing I can put my hands in to make it right, uh, I turned it on us. It, like it really had a lot to do with, with that because our film was just kind of just sitting there like doing it. Just, it's just like kind of like awaiting a color correct and whatever. And I, I've really, I, I kind of. I turned on it in a, in a vicious way, I think. I turned it, it was really me turning on myself, and I think it was like you're saying. I, uh, I, I should have been in service. I should have been doing, like, this should, and we should have known this. October's a good month for service. Every we'll, month is a good month. Every month is a good month for service, but we'll have been so selfish in the previous two months in, like, working on our project that service would be good in October. And when you're not doing it, it's like your heart's pulling you towards that, and the fucking it seems like the world is falling apart. And it, well, like... And no one wants to talk about it, you know? Like, you made me watch the vice presidential debate, and it's, like, scary. 
you know, and like people don't want to talk about it and like, like, well, you know, a lot of uh, people in power are paying attention to the wrong things. That's and what it, that's there's, what I mean. And uh, distracting with uh, creating bigger problems than doing anything towards solutions because some solutions cost money and aren't lucrative or whatever it is. And But what we're seeing, at least in Asheville and around the world, is that the people who are helping, there's there's mutual aid and it kind of just feels like this is the direction of what's being required of us is to get... To realize that when shit does hit the fan and it's going to hit the fan where you live, it's just a matter of time, mm-hmm. that it's uh, it's going to be the, your immediate community that you need to be there for and that is going to be there for you. And so strengthening our community ties, becoming more sustainable, um, caring more about the land. And yeah, we could we could talk about how it's too late and all that stuff, but that doesn't help us have positive. Unless it, it motivates us towards like action now it's never too late i mean yeah it's, I, I don't i don't want to believe it's too late it's never but too it's late. dangerously close to the point where uh we can't really think about anything else right now if it's but too then. late why the fuck are we all still enslaved to this fucked up system mm-hmm. you know if it's too late shouldn't we all just be like fuck it it's not too late i think it i th- i think I think we're at the fuck it point. I mean, I was at the, I've been at the fuck it point my whole life mm. of uh well, I'm not working for you. What the fuck are we talking about? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not working to make you money. Are you crazy? Yeah. I mean, I have done that, but you know. You got to do what you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I I really don't. Well, we met a woman on our trip who she was saying, "I just tried to do better every day." She said, I, I I couldn't quit smoking, so I decided I'm not going to try to quit smoking. It's going to be health food and cigarettes or whatever. So every day she, she was like, I'm going to try to do better. And so she would be kind to a stranger, you know, buy less plastic. And you know where that's led her ultimately on this, like, I don't know, five-year, ten-year journey that she's been on of doing a little bit better every day while still smoking cigarettes? She's like living off the land, using her own, not doing anything plastic, using her own, own human waste as her manure. and uh, Human manure. Human manure. Yeah. And the problem with, we do, every, you've eaten food with human manure, so don't even be grossed out. It's just, it is, but what's- It's f- good eating. <laughs> I, I tried it. What are we talking about? The problem with human manure is that we consume, that most humans consume so much crap and plastic that our our manure is toxic. Mm. So we got to put- if we want what's coming out of us to be clean and generative to the earth, we have to put generative to the earth stuff inside of us. Shout out to Angie out there uh, living on the Mesa in New Mexico. Yeah. Beautiful soul. But think about the, I mean, think about the spell she cast on her life. Because if you actually stick to that, damn, that's really... Uh, Sometimes I judge the pace at which I'm doing it, but I know like everything I do is now in a ball jar. You know, I'm eating whole food snacks. I'm eating pumpkin seeds and raw cashews instead of uh, chips that come in a like airbag that's like this big and needs to be shipped from everywhere all yeah. over the place. And you just you w- learn a new thing and you just incorporate it. And it doesn't have to be so intimidating. You're just incorporating new things one at a time. And mm-hmm. it's like gives our life mission and purpose. Mm-hmm. To consume less and care more, and you don't can't do it all at once because you're not going to be able to. You just do one better thing. Every that's day. well. I mean, that's our life force. Yeah. You know, is 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 wanting to stave off future problems by just starting to do the right thing now. You know, that's what it's. It, and you know, your your life force is like uh, it's it's like it's the angel on one of your shoulders whispering to do good things, and your death force is the devil on the other shoulder whispering, "Who cares." Last night you were, just, you were talking about this. Pringles all night last I night. I couldn't stop talking about fr- c- You know why? We're watching a movie where there's Pringles and Coca-Cola and they're eating ice cream and they're, they're like, they're just fucking, it, they're hypnotizing you. They're young, beautiful people eating all this junk and you're like, let's eat that shit. 
let's go to the you were literally saying let's go to the gas station right now you were giving into that little that little devil your death force was coming out <laughs> yeah no i was i was at, saying like if you had said yeah let's go to the gas station i would have gone to the gas station last night mm. yeah absolutely I and just, and you know what you would have been saying today like i really wish i wouldn't have done that i'll never maybe, do that who knows? again maybe i would have been like good for me yeah but i know what i'm saying today what i'm grateful i didn't go to the gas station last oh, night oh hell no <laughs> no i mean it's it, it's like it's why we don't drink uh, you know it's like it's it's so simple like i don't think either one of us are alcoholics um i'm sure we could probably drink ourselves into alcoholism like anyone could but like i don't think either one of us are naturally like prone towards addiction to alcohol you know no i tested it i'm not yeah i think we both tested we it tested it's it. just like i'm not we, saying things in our life couldn't create a, an alcoholism system yeah because as much as it's a disease i do think it's like a response to trauma yeah and uh our life is not over so there's more trauma to be had yeah we'll see what happens but right now i don't i don't care about it but it, i mean that partly like i don't even know when we stopped drinking i think it was part of that just setting in motion just do a little bit better at a time type of thing you know, and damn, that's like a blueprint for a great life. Well, I will report I've been making my own hummus yeah. out of dried chickpeas. Yeah. And I didn't need to buy a new appliance. I use the emulsifier. Yeah. And uh, it's delicious and it's great and everyone loves it. And uh, it requires a little more forethought, like soaking yeah. the chickpeas before I, the night before and everything. But just one little thing that I'm incorporating. Yeah. This is the cleanest I've ever uh, been eating my whole life since August 1st. We were already very clean, but like I haven't eaten any bullshit. I'm just like, no, I'm done. Because I was right on the, I was on the, I was a dweller on the threshold and I was just trolling myself and just being like the best eater, the most mindful person all day, except from 10 30 p.m to 11 30 p.m when you're allowed to just do whatever or you're like oh well they're vegan snacks no it's still highly processed high salt oil bullshit it's all bullshit and uh i just didn't want to do it anymore but uh i was still doing it and then i stopped doing it and once i stopped doing it for a few days i didn't care about it at all so now i'm like wow this is like a, a nice stretch i've put together of taking taking better care of myself like here's the thing we do drugs like we we like taking drugs like we're adults like our life's about sex drugs and rock and roll right now and you gotta kind of do right by yourself in a lot of different categories to be able to do sex drugs and rock and roll the way we do so um, i don't know if that's a life force voice or a death force voice calling out but whatever (laughs) it is it feels real and it feels real to both of us so we're like, how do we keep the good times going? Well, let's never stray from our diet. Who gives a fuck well, if we're you... sitting there eating pumpkin seeds in our car well, and bringing <laughs> smoothies everywhere and jo- making seven days worth of lentil salad, you know, before we leave the house on a road trip? Well, <laughs> I mean, once I stopped eating like chips and then I, I'm like, I tried to eat chips again. I was like, I can't do this. No. I, I mean, it's I did it. for your teeth. I did it, and I was like, I don't even enjoy this anymore. Yeah, yeah. There is a there is a point where you just like take you you incorporate these new changes, and then you're like, I don't even think I could go back. I. Well, your mojo can't come out when it's fucking the just being like poisoned away and like you're you're disguising the nature of your soul with all these chemicals and unnecessary stuff and what you're not compensating with which which you have to even though we're trying not to consume uh, toxins and we're really going out of our way i still feel compelled to get in a fucking sauna like every other day now i don't care where we are it's like you got to drop everything and get in the fucking sauna I sound like fucking Joe Rogan right now, but like if you're going to uh, just do whatever, you got to figure out ways to fucking sweat it out I because really that's when it, it literally will turn into thoughts and those thoughts will turn into words and those words will turn into actions and those actions will start to crystallize your destiny. So it's this crazy like process that can fuck you up from the inside out. 
And like, kind of, I don't know, once I fe- felt aware of that and like kind of want to figure out how to get behind the control panels, I feel like more and more every day I get behind the control panels. I don't necessarily feel better because I've always ate pretty clean, but I don't ever feel bad. Like as far as physically, no. and I, you know, with, no. when I since I've cleaned up my diet, and I will say with like saunas, I do believe that, you know, how there was like a, a moment where everyone was like starting a new uh, salt tank business. What is that? What is oh, it? the float, float tanks. Yeah yeah, 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 they're great. I really do think sauna houses have a great potential to be our third place. That's not a bar, that's not work, and that's not home. Mm. A place where you go and sweat out the demons with your friends and talk and move the energy. You sing with the boys. That's yeah, what I do. Yeah, it loosens up your vocal cords. You can hit those sweet harmonies. You love when me and the boys sing in there. Oh, yeah, it's great. The sauna boys. You, you and I uh, do uh, some good chanting together. We, yeah. We harmonize. Mm-hmm. But also, like, I feel like sometimes we get in there and, like, uh, we'll have, like, the deepest conversations with our friends. Like you, you can't help it. It has like it, it has a purgative effect. Just stepping in there and surrendering. We're so not, yeah. Who knows if we'll get alone to do it? But we hope that uh, people around here start doing public sauna rooms. Yeah, we might have to open one. We might have to try to open one. It's tough to open businesses when you're not like a rich person who just has like it's, money to lose. Because <laughs> like you know that's like a big part of businesses like have is like failing. <laughs> totally. You know when you when you don't have room to fail it's like a very fucking nerve-wracking you know what else i want to say about all this as a a report as my uh weekly report Mm. so if you've been listening for a little bit you may have at some point heard sean talk about how he's flossing and me talking about how i never floss or him making fun of me how i never floss so i started committing to flossing because i went to the doctor and had to pay 500 dollars to fill cavities and whatever and that's brutal um and I started just flossing. Like I did like four nights in a row of flossing, and I swear, four nights of it, and then get it and like seeing the little food get out of my teeth or whatever. I'm literally addicted to flossing now. I went from someone who, yeah, I don't, I'm okay. I don't think so. To like a floss addict. I you see, it, it was crazy how long you would just sit there and just see me every night. Like, all right, I'm gonna start my dental routine. And you're like, okay, I'm just going to brush my teeth and go to bed. I'm like, shit, I feel bad for you. <laughs> I know. It's going to catch up to you. <laughs> and it barely did. It didn't even really catch up to you. These it dental bills are didn't. brutal. The, the, the dental bills. And that's so much, so much of like, you know, it might seem like we have a lot of discipline in our life. And it's like, no, we don't have money. <laughs> We're too poor to we be. We don't have money. I can't, like... I people go to the fucking doctor like all the fucking time people go to a doctor it's crazy to me i'm like how can you afford that how can you afford the prescription they're going to try to get you on how can you afford to live any other way than what we're doing which is like literally having to be crazy about the way you treat your body and like just treating it like a fucking temple and like no bullshit in there it's like we can't afford we can like we're like we can't afford to eat poison we can't afford no. to accumulate cancer cells in our body that we have to deal with because no. we don't have the money we to don't deal have the, with that. I, we'd be like, okay, we're done. I don't know what else to do. Like, you know, we we can't go there. So we have to, it's like, it's risk mitigation for mm-hmm. us. And uh, yeah, I, I think more people should be thinking like that because once, once those, you know, uh, the healthcare system gets its hooks in you, they're in there. Yeah. They're in there. They'll get you on a thyroid medication that you're fucking, you have to take forever. You know what I mean? They'll get you on this shit where you're like, fuck, man, they got me. And now I'm like indebted to them. And now if the apocalypse happens, I'm fucked because how am I going to get my goddamn prescription or whatever? Mm -hmm. So a lot of it, a lot of our stuff is very much motivated by um, not having to spend money on doctors and dentists and external upkeep of our fucking temple like we got it we'll throw it a power wash today i don't give a damn (laughs) but like it's you know and when you when you get to the other side of it and you're feeling better i'm like fuck man you sac what you sacrifice what you do to your body and your soul for a mouth pleasure for such a temporary mouth pleasure you know jerk off 
No. <laughs> breathe, motherfucker. You're right, breathe. Because it is such a, like, <laughs> go, go jerk off. <laughs> go jerk off. Well, maybe. If you're, like, a if you're a food addict, if you're, like, trying to, like, get out of it, yeah, maybe you temporarily replace it with some other... Pleasure. Some other, yeah, dopamine thing that's, like, in the same world. But, um, yeah, it's just, like, it's... I, I don't even really fucking know what eating that much sugar was doing to me. I just know I feel so much better that I'm like, I you know, I, like I, I can't even, I can't even fully like describe yet. You know what happened last night that I started craving? I had a little of that granola. Yeah. I had that little chocolate piece because I was like, I'm, I'm a period. I, you yeah. know, I, or I'm getting over it or it's mm-hmm. the tail end. I'm going to have this little chocolate chunk. Mm-hmm. And then I introduced some sugar and then I was like, where are the goddamn Pringles? Yeah. Where are the cheese doodles? Where are the cheese puffs? And uh, I think sugar does have that kind of like demon in your gut response. Oh yeah. And yeah, breathing through it is the best thing you can do. You just gotta. You get it's a it's a hump. It's a it's a hump. This it craving sucks. is it a hump. Feel, it it feels like a it, it feels like a mountain, but it's actually not. It's a hump. Because yeah. when you're on the other side of it, you're like, whoa, whoa, what was that? Like this thing, that 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 craving had a hold of me. I've been there for so many different things. You know. Every substance, sex, women, fucking, uh, but there is a, there's a hump that you can get over and, uh, yeah, don't disguise the nature of your soul (laughs) (laughs) because there's plenty of ways to do it and there's plenty of things to do it with. And guess what? They're all addictive because they're all distracting you from, uh. void <laughs> i don't even know what we're talking about oh we've done plenty of time here let's switch do you want to go over to the patreon for sure. a little bit cool we'll see you guys on patreon.com slash church of chill we're going to talk a little bit more openly and intimately <laughs> you know how we do <laughs> all right thank you magic. love you guys bye